by day, he's the general manager at New Zealand Trade and Enterprise, but in his spare time, he writes about his passion for Kiwi ingenuity and innovation. Here to share his latest book, number eight, Recharge, which he co-wrote with Nano Girl, Dr. Michelle Dickinson. Please welcome to the cafe and the Harvey Norman Lounge, David Downs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. So congratulations on your third book, yeah. I don't know where you find the time. Now this is changing because you've had the number, the number eight wire mentality. Right. And you reckon that might be a little bit outdated now? Oh yeah, there's a bit of a problem with it. A number eight wire being... Contentious. A, exactly. Well the whole idea with number eight wire is it's that Kiwis can make anything out of just a piece of wire and you know, the, it started kind of on the farm and farmers are bending things and making gates and whatever. And the reality is it's now 2017 and actually we've moved on. You know, we're a sophisticated first world country. We've got Thai food in New Zealand now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Right. We're not the sort of folksy backwards sort of backwater that we used to be and actually that number eight wire thing stops us thinking about ourselves on the world stage as a kind of a sophisticated global player. So your point of the book was to showcase some of the innovations and the technology that we've been developing that yeah. is on the world stage? Correct and tell some stories that you know that inspire and kind of surprise people because there's a lot going on and people just don't know about it. Yeah there's, you've got 202 in here haven't you? Yeah. World changing innovations. Correct. So how did you even begin to choose them? Well the nice thing about it is that between Michelle and I, you mentioned Michelle's nano girl, and, and between her and I, we sort of know a lot of organisations around New Zealand. We get to see some cool technology and some some cool companies and entrepreneurs doing interesting things. And we often are telling, finding ourselves telling stories at barbecues or whatever. Did you know that you know we're one of the world leaders in dartboard manufacturing? And people, no, go, I did not. Really? And we go, oh, well, God, someone's got to tell these stories. So we collated together into the book. We actually ended up having to not include a whole lot because there's just so much going on. And, th and that's a great thing because I recently hosted the um, Champion Canterbury Business. Awards. Oh, great awards. So many innovations yeah, yeah. that were there that I had no idea were Kiwi, and they are on the world stage. So I'm great you've, you've got a whole lot in a book. Good. You include a lot of startups as well. Why was that important? Yeah, we wanted to show real diversity. So there's the, some big guys like the Fisher and Pikels and the Zeros of the world, but actually there's a hell of a lot going on underneath the kind of the headlines. And they, some of those startup companies are doing amazing things, and they grow from New Zealand. Talk about sort of the, the South, South Island ethos. You've got companies like Timely, who's based in Dunedin, who sells uh, scheduling software for hairdressers. And you think, that's a pretty sort of a niche thing to do. <laughs> but they've got a global customer There's base. There's a lot of hairdressers. There's a lot of wow. hairdressers in the world. And you don't need to sell to every one of them. You can sell to just a fraction. They have a big customer's growth. Yeah. yeah. You know what I call this book? And I, and I use this, and this is a compliment as well. Okay. It's a toilet book. Oh really? You, can dip it, you put it by the toilet. The pages are a little bit shiny for that, I would thought. And dip, <laughs> and dip it out of it, like because it's got little short t stories oh, and some incredible now. things. I get you now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the perfect length of time. I like to call it a coffee table book. It's a little bit more seamly, but yes, it's okay. the idea. Yeah. You can so, dip in and out and find something you didn't know. And that's a great thing with the dipping in and out. You, you know, you've sort of chosen groups of stories. Yeah. Up in the air, your first sort of that's start. Right. Why yeah. was up in the air your first start? Well, because lately there's been a lot of news about a company called Rocket Lab who. And, you know, so New Zealand oh, has yes. a space industry and then we look deeper and actually we've got quite a few um, people in the space sector. We've got drone technology, we've got companies who make aeroplanes for example in New Zealand, who would have thought? And we've got companies that service private jets for example from New Zealand. So you two with your, you know, you'd have private jets, the two of you well, clearly. Obviously, so yeah. you know, if, you, if yeah. you need them catered for or serviced, you, a company in Auckland looks after private jets all around the world. And that's oh, extraordinary isn't it? There's a nice story here about a man who makes um, 3D printed fins for surfboards. That's right, Roy Stewart. So beautiful works of art, these things. And then he's got uh, 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 surfboard uh, things that he prints that actually are mimicked on, on real life. So they look like shark fins. And he sold one for a million dollars. My goodness. A million okay. dollars. Okay, well, that, that brings me nicely to this next question. You've got a lot of social innovation in there, but aren't we driven by the money? Why are we so driven in New Zealand by social innovation as well? Yeah, one of the interesting yeah, there is a there's a few social innovation um, opportunities in there. I reckon New Zealanders do things for bigger reasons than just money. And okay. that's the lovely thing about us. That's one of our nature's comes. Virtually none of the companies in there are only doing it for money. Right. Many of them are doing it for to change the world. They've, you know, they've got a purpose-driven organisation. You know, there's companies in there like Support Crew who has a website that helps people ask for help when they're in need. Um, you've got um, some mothers who invented a game because they knew their kids were playing on laptops all the time or, or um, iPads all the time yeah. and so they've got a game that lets you play outdoors and when you go outside a certain zone it sort of stops working. So these people are doing things for a bigger reason than just money and that's a 
Love nice it. to meet them. Yeah, yeah nice. Mm. It, it really is fascinating too, and also the fact that um, between there can be some great things happen between industries when two yeah. people sit down from different industries and have a, a bit of a conversation. That's right. The best story of all is my favourite story in the book. With two a scientist from the University of Auckland and meeting with a farmer or a, a, a person who helps cows grow, and they started talking about of all things bull semen. Well, you know, as you do it. Yes, yeah, exactly. Two completely different people coming coffee. together. And what they realised is the farmer had a, a problem because he didn't want all the male calves. They need the female calves, obviously, so they can create milking cows. But actually, that you know, you can't choose. And then the scientist, Katha Simpson, her name is, and she's a professor at the university, she said, actually, I've got some technology that can help you with that. We've got these laser beams that can sort sperm out and detect whether it's a male or a female and actually stops a lot of wastage in some ways. It's a sort of sustainability play. So the two of them have now got an industry and gender technologies and they can, uh, they're can they selling that sort of technology around the world. Oh, see, that's that what I mean. It's just such a good book full of all these great stories. Yeah. Innovation, clever people. I wanted to touch more on that uh, statement you said at the start about the number eight wire mentality yeah. needs to be changed. I thought that was why we were good at this or do we need to take it to a next level? It's a next level thing. It's okay. exactly right, Mike. There's, a, there's a, some great elements of number eight wire and, and some of those sort of cultural traditions that we have about ourselves are great. So we challenge authority We've got necessity. I mean, New Zealand is an island nation. We've had to do things our own way and kind of forge our own way. And we challenge us, we think differently about problems, like the example I just said there. But actually, we also need to be worldly and sophisticated and we need to have highly designed products that the world wants and we need to be able to compete on the global stage. So if we don't add to that kind of number eight wire thinking with this kind of sophistication, then we'll always be this little nation of hobbits inventing things here. <laughs> that's right, yes, that's just yeah. the hobbit thing. Yeah. You also, uh, t there's uh, some female people in here as well. Yeah, uh, female people, yes. Obviously, obviously Women, we like to call them. <laughs> <but yes. laughs> female people, yeah. like me, I'm yeah. a female person. That's very nice. <laughs> I didn't observe that about you. <laughs> Uh, there's some females in here, but there's less than the men, obviously. Were they a little bit more reticent about coming forward? Yeah, it was a funny thing. I mean, firstly, the reality is there are fewer female entrepreneurs and founders than we'd like, and that's part of why Michelle and we I were really that. keen. Yeah. We should definitely change that. And she's doing a lot of work in schools, mm. for example, to get girls to really understand science and technology. But actually, we also found this phenomenon where some of the female founders we know about who've got interesting kind of ideas and products were very reticent to get into the book. They say, oh, we're not ready yet. Product's not quite ready for prime time. Whereas the blokes are all, nah, put me in, <laughs> yes. I'm there. Yeah. I've got a picture on a paper, it'll do. That's right, yeah, yeah. No, and that's the thing about Kiwis, I guess you can come up with a great idea, and as you said, to take it to the next level, we're very reserved and a little bit humble, a little yeah. bit shy. Yes. So as part of your job as well, making sure that we do come overcome that fear and celebrate that success. Exactly. So in my day job, as you mentioned earlier, I work for New Zealand Trade and Enterprise, which is a government agency helping companies go global around the world. And one of the biggest sort of phenomenons or frustrations we find our international offices will tell me is Kiwis turn up and they've got a great idea, a great product and, they'll, and we'll get them a meeting with someone really important at a really big organisation where they could sell it and they'll walk into the room and the person will say tell me about your product and they'll go Oh, it's all right. <laughs> True. It's not much True. to talk about. And we go, oh, come on. I, can, oh, I get what you mean now. Yes, yeah. we need to change that. We're yeah. working on it. Well, this female person thinks this book is really great. <laughs> thank it's you a very great much. read. Coffee table read, and all toilet read, depending on what you want. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Number eight, Recharged, is out now and available where all good books are sold.